Okay, I hope y'all can see me. Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Yudi, and I go by Yudi on the Glow here on my other social media platforms. So make sure you guys subscribe, hit that like button, do all the things. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some easy steps to elevate your look, like to always look put together. I feel like I've always seen these videos, so I thought, why don't I give you guys my opinion and my spin on this? So if you're interested, please stay tuned. So the very first tip I have is to dress for your shape. Now, this will take some practice, but what you really want to do is make sure you're checking for balance and proportion. And the easiest thing I can do is give you guys examples for myself. So for instance, you guys know I'm working on my posture. If you didn't no, now you know but my shoulders tend to slouch down so i love a nice broad shoulder and i do like vintage looks so i tend to gravitate especially for jackets and blazers i love something that has a little padded shoulder or just a little extra shoulder detail because naturally my shoulders do stretch down and you know i can work on my posture but i still kind of have like that sloping so i tend to like things that have a padded shoulder or an exaggerated shoulder just to even me out someone who has like straight broad shoulders they may not want that extra attention there so again it's that balance and check system that's gonna take practice another thing for me i have a very straight frame looking armor we ain't got curves in the front we just don't so i like to play around with volume and proportions in different areas another thing for me i have thicker thighs so i find straight leg bottoms to work very well for me to just even me out but then i also find flare bottoms also nice to kind of give me that shape that i don't necessarily get when you're looking head on you know what i mean and another thing i do when it comes to looks especially when i'm trying to recreate looks that have like a very heavy bottom super baggy extra cargo all of the above for me i have to play it a little safe because those things can add like a visual volume or can add weight visually to me but sometimes when i'm trying to get a certain look if it requires that sometimes a straight leg that's slightly bigger works for me than something that is extremely oversized again this takes practice to figure out what works for you it's really kind of boiling down to what's the most flattering on your body what makes you feel the most confident what makes you feel the most comfortable that could be the difference in playing with lint do midi dresses compliment you more than maxi dresses do you prefer a more fitted look or a loose look do you like flared or structured pieces these are all things to keep in mind and again it's not i, I wouldn't say per se this is something you learn overnight but it's something when you start building that pattern you start to realize what works and doesn't work so very first tip is pay attention to your shape and what flatters you the most. My next tip is fit is not optional, it is necessary. So when it comes to tailoring alterations, I feel like these are things that will really build up your wardrobe and really elevate it to where it needs to be. But also being realistic depending on how you are, you may want to avoid getting pieces that require so many alterations. If you already do not have a tailor in place or someone who can alter your looks for you, I'll be real, I have stuff that I thought I would get altered either i never got them altered or i tried to fix it up myself and made it work but if you never get around to fixing those pieces and they have so many things to be done more than likely they can just end up sitting in your closet so sometimes if you don't have that system in place or if you're not pushing yourself like you know by the end of this week i'm gonna find a new tailor by the end of this week i'm gonna call up so and so and ask who they use for their tailor if you are not doing that i would say stay away from things and items that require all those changes because if you're not gonna make it the piece will not look flattering on you and it's just gonna end up sitting in your closet or, or when you wear it you're regretting wearing it so things that need a lot of changes to be done and you don't have a tailor in place and you don't plan on getting one in like a quick time frame i would say just avoid them for now because it's gonna end up in your closet just sitting there and more to this idea of fit not being optional. Now, would you rather be squeezed up like a pack of sardines or stuffed in like a muffin top? Or would you rather just go a size up and have a comfortable fit, looseness, and be able to move in the clothing that you're wearing? For me, I would rather get the thing that fits me or has a little extra wiggle room. And I feel like in this category, it's very easy for people to try to hold on to the size they were years ago or the size they were like in their glory days, whatever the case may be. But the reality is we don't stay the exact same size for the entirety of our lives. Like your size in grade school and high school can be very different to your size postgraduate or your size when in your 30s 40s and 50s so i feel like it's important to kind of let go of the old you and embrace where you are currently at especially if you feel healthy in your body or you're or you're working to have a healthier body because let's be realistic you know and i feel like the same thing applies to undergarments you want something that fits well and really supports you so that means some of the garments you probably had from years back may not still be appropriate or still get the job done and that's completely okay 
But in this department, I'm not too versed on like the best brands out there or things that people really love. So if you happen to have any recommendations of great undergarment companies and brands to try out, please leave those in the comments so like we can, you know, learn from each other because I'm not too versed here. I, you know, I'm not too versed. And the last thing that I have to further emphasize in this category of fit is comfort. I don't play about my comfort. Like for one, like if I ever go somewhere and my feet are on fire, they're hurting, there's no way I can enjoy that event because the whole time, like you gonna start to see it on my face because I'm gonna be uncomfortable or I can't walk at my normal stride, my normal pace. I can't go anywhere with my feet hurting because it's just gonna ruin the event. I'm gonna be thinking, okay, when can I change out my shoes? When can I leave? So comfort triumphs everything. And especially when you have stuff that is not comfortable, it's like you kind of pick and choose when you want to wear it, like do I want to go through this? Or it's just sitting in your classroom because you're not trying to fool with it. So getting the right fit, making sure your fit is comfortable, making sure it does all the things it needs to do for where you currently are, is very important in elevating your look and also kind of elevating your spirit, your confidence, all those things in the clothes that you wear. Next up I have making sure you have quality pieces in your closet. And I feel like a very, very common misconception is that the more you pay, the more quality it is. And that is not always the case. We can look at some of these designer brands, we can look at some of these designer flaws where people are buying these items and they have to send them back to be checked for flaws or whatever quality issue that went by the quality inspector or didn't get inspected to begin with. Or you throwing out your hard earned cash and the items are not lasting the way that they should be lasting. So I think it's good to invest in quality pieces, but not get lost in the idea that just because something has a designer brand name on it or a high price tag, that it's always gonna be better quality. There are times that it can be, but not always. Not always. They all make stuff like they used to. And this is why I would say don't limit yourself. I love when people do a mix of high and low fashions because it really shows you that you can make it happen both ways. So don't get caught up in it. Even when we're talking about fast fashion, the first few people I think about are like Zara and H&M. Now with them, there's some things that you can find that can make that statement that will last. On the other side of that coin, there are things that will not last. So you really have to take your time picking out what works and doesn't work. Same thing with mirror tiered companies and so on. But when you are picking out items really from anywhere, I would say pay attention to the thickness and the transparency of the pieces you're picking. If they were not meant to be sheer, they should not be looking sheer in your hand or on a hanger. Another thing I like to do, especially for more casual wear, I like to find things that are double lined. Um, especially I'm thinking about even like those tops that, that kind of feel like they have like a little bit of extra control or shaping in them. They're typically like an elastane mix or whatever the case, a little bit similar to like bathing suit material. But things that have double lining, I'm gonna prefer that over the items that are singly lined. I have a couple pieces like that that are like basic tops or biker shorts or leggings. Those are things that I may not be dropping a huge bag for, but I feel put together when I wear those items or that they're getting the job done or that they're lasting a little bit longer than the things that are that are not doubly lined or have that double fabric going on. And also when I'm shopping, I try to pay attention to things that maintain their shape and structure. If something is supposed to have all of this structure and stand on its own, if it's not doing that on a hanger, it's not gonna do that on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if something is supposed to be a corset, like if something is supposed to have boning and corsetting, or whatever the case may be, if it's not maintaining its structure on the hanger, it's not maintaining its structure when I try it on in the fitting room, it's probably not gonna last, baby. <laughs> It's probably not. And I talked more about how I pick up my pieces in the video I made. I think it was eight shopping tips to buy better and regret less. I'm gonna make sure I have that link somewhere here. And also in picking out quality pieces, you wanna make sure you have your go-to essentials in the basic color. So for those basic colors, that could be black, white, gray, that's more on the cool side, or it could be black, white, neutral, and that's more on the warmer side. Whatever works for you, once you have like that good piece, that good go-to t-shirt, I would say get them in those three colors. And then from there, I would say you can add a pop of color and something that complements your skin tone. So for me, I love what red does on my skin and I also like yellow. This is also going to say that just because you want an elevated look, that doesn't mean that you have to stick to your ordinary whites and blacks and you know, those basic colors. You can add color and still keep that elevated look. Next up, we're talking about maintaining the quality of your pieces. And so for instance, one of the things I'll do, if I have something that is knitwear, that is woven, like a chunky knit sweater, I will not hang that on a hanger because it's gonna stretch, it's gonna droop, and it's gonna lose its shape. So that's how I maintain my knitwear and some of my sweatshirt. Next up, you're gonna have to iron and steam your pieces before you leave the door. If you're like me, there are times you struggle, there are times you try to like, you know, take the fast way, take a shortcut or skip it. And then often, depending on where I'm going, I might regret it. So 
take the time to iron and steam your clothes. I feel like sometimes steaming is a little bit easier. It kind of just depends on the day I'm having, but that extra attention to detail will have you right. Another thing that I will say, I feel like sometimes we underestimate the power of sunlight. Please avoid keeping your items in direct sunlight. Even if you have perfumes, it, they can be nature and the scent change or become more watered down or just lose its overall potency before it should be. Even think about when you have fruit, you don't want to leave your fruit in direct sunlight because they're going to ripen faster. So I was watching someone's video and they left their purse on their shelf, but where they left it on their shelf, it had direct sunlight and it was completely bleached. And I personally, I don't think it's a testament of the brand per se of how that bag was constructed. It was more so the fact that we forget that the sun will bleach your stuff i don't know if you've ever left like rubber shoes or crocs in a hot car like if you live somewhere in the south or you live somewhere that is real hot and you will really see what the sun can do to something rubber so don't leave your clothes or your perfumes or just anything valuable don't leave those pieces in direct sunlight if they're going to be there just move them i had some extra fancy mannequin heads and i left them in front of the blind i didn't think the sunlight was penetrating through until like a few weeks later i realized i completely destroyed them and the tone was completely off so do not underestimate the power of the sun and what it can do to your items do not leave your stuff in direct sunlight just don't do it another thing you can do to maintain in your pieces i don't know the name of that tool but you know if your sweaters start peeling a little bit or even your furniture if you have like cloth furniture there's those um little things you can get to kind of like shave off the little beatings that your clothing can get so that's another thing you can do to maintain not only your clothes but maybe some of your furniture this is more minor but instead of pulling your tags off take the time to just cut them off because you don't want to stag something whatever the case might be then i will also say if that item needs to be dry clean go ahead and take it to the dry cleaner just go ahead where i'm at now I'll be honest i don't feel like going through that so a lot of my pieces don't require dry cleaning and i i, I like it that way it's peaceful for me next up i want to talk about transitional look i personally feel like an elevated look especially an elevated casual can be worn in multiple settings for instance if you ever showed up to an event or a cash up people are like where you going i'm coming here that is what i mean by an elevated casual especially if you're not doing too much and keeping it effortless like things like you can be wearing this to go to eat to go to brunch to go to lunch or you could be going to a museum or this could be you leaving work and going to happy hour or this could be your regular work day attire i feel like looks that have that crossover also give you that elevated look so for instance in another example what i've been seeing a lot of in recent years are wearing like your usual lounge set like whether it's a two-piece sweatsuit or whatever the case may be throwing on your long line jacket whatever sneakers you want and maybe you might add a fitted cap to it grab your bag and literally that look can be worn in so many places like like it has so much versatility so whether you're going to catch a movie whether you're going to another event and it's like okay i didn't have time to get dressed but you know i still look a little put together or you just running errands for that day you still feel like you're not wearing something basic it's elevated next up i want to say do not sleep on accessorizing listen sunglasses will get you there if they don't make you look edgy they're gonna make you look mysterious and if that's not what you're going for that's just gonna protect your eyes if you had a long long night or a lot happening again put your sunglasses on and it's gonna complete the look or just add another element to your look another thing with your accessories when it comes to shoes maintaining your shoes so making sure you handle or avoid certain scuffs on your shoes you replace worn down heels i remember someone showing some heels i don't remember the brand but they were pretty pricey heels but the way the heel was ate up i just could not stop looking at the heel so you know those little heel replacements use those or, or find a cobbler in your area to make sure if these are your favorite shoes you get the most wear out of another thing you can do is resole or add a sole to your shoes especially designer shoes because i know a lot of those well not a lot but a handful of designer loafers i'm thinking like the gucci loafers i feel like the soles of many of those are um are leather or so are very delicate so once you have a system in place just go ahead and get those resold or add a sole to it just to preserve the shoe and or for added comfort we're all about comfort over here and also in this realm of accessories do not forget about your jewelry whether it's signature jewelry or statement jewelry when it comes to signature jewelry i'm thinking about you know maybe an everyday necklace that you wear all the time it doesn't matter if it gets wet it will still retain its shine its luster and how it came and when it comes to statement jewelry i'm thinking about chunky earrings chunky necklaces things like that that really stand out for me i have my hoops but these are more so a statement and my signature look because i just like them they're easy to throw on for me so don't sleep on your jewelry pieces figure out what works for you you can get your statement pieces that you may not be wearing every day but but your signature pieces you might want to seek out things that do not tarnish quickly that you don't have to replace those kind of items you know think, think through it now when i've watched a lot of videos that talk about elevating your look they include your appearance and makeup um 
we gonna tread lightly here i would say for me I, I feel like the easiest way to elevate your makeup look is to go like a soft glam route or a dewy route i feel like those are easy ways but this is all subjective not everyone may agree in this area and that's okay but i would say if you like a neutral look go for a soft glam work and practice techniques to get that look or if you want to be a little bit daring play with a soft glam look and pop in a bright red or a bold lip color i feel like when you play around with liners and glosses all those things can add to softening your look and when it comes to drawing attention to your eyes play with what works best for you for some people it's wearing extensions or falsies but in this area i would say pay attention to length and volume and, and really get a feel for what works best for your eye shape so for instance my lashes might be a little bit too long for most people but where i have them now the volume is okay for me and the length is okay for me anything more i feel like will be a little bit too much for my liking another thing you can do is pay attention to the mascaras you use whether you like a brown mascara or a black mascara which provides a very subtle details but sometimes those things can really bring out your eye color same thing goes for wing liner do you want to extend that wing keep it short keep it bold keep it thinner or do you want to smoke out your lash line see what makes the most sense for you and flatters you the most then in terms of bringing vibrance and lifting the face and really highlighting your bone structure maybe you might want to switch out contouring for bronzing or maybe just experiment with blush this year i'm trying out more blushes but there are so many from pink purple mauve orange there are so many shades and tones that you can try and just experimenting with those can really bring out your sense of style but also give a little bit extra to your look at that elevation and another thing that i often hear with these kind of videos are keeping your nails kept now i'm gonna be honest with you i'm gonna be real real honest my reality is i'm not gonna have my nails done 24 7 365 is it 365 days in a year I'm not gonna have them done all those days. However, I feel like a clean nail is better than a chip nail. So me being realistic, even when I do have my nails done, one thing my nails don't do out of nowhere are start growing when I get them done. So when I have them done, I wanna make sure they look kept, but I'm be realistic. You gonna see these grown out because that's what nails do. And when I'm not wearing nails or not getting a refill, I'm okay with my nubs. I'm not gonna show you my nubs right now, but I'm okay with having nubs rather than having chipped or cracked or whatever the case may be. So in this area, I would say give yourself some grace because I've seen videos where people are like, you gotta have your nails done 24 seven. And it's like, sometimes the nails breathe. Give your nails a break. They're tired, they're screaming, they're thirsty. So when it comes to that, do what works best for you, but also don't feel pressured that you have to be perfect. 24 7 because that's not realistic and honestly as long as they clean and hygienic we are good to go now another thing i want to experiment too because you guys know the press-ons that we have today are not the press-ons we had yesterday so i do, do want to experiment with more press-ons this year as well as trying out more blushes because child them press-ons on came a long way a very very long way now this next one i'm gonna call book but not busy and what i mean by that as far as elevating your look sometimes when we simplify a look it looks even more elevated so it doesn't have to be busy you know you can bring the drama be booked you know booked for the drama booked for the look but it doesn't always have to be super busy super all over the place and i feel like in doing that you remove some of the distractions and you create room for a focal piece and the focal piece is what's going to do the talking for you it's going to be your statement piece it doesn't mean you have to be all boring it doesn't mean you don't do color pattern none of that that's not what i'm saying but it means when you are doing color when you are doing pattern it's intentional it's purposeful and it makes the noise in the best way so for instance if you have a full monochrome moment in one color that is the moment and we're focused in because we see the color we know what you're going for or if you decide to add a print those are the focal pieces and that's where we're really getting life from and i feel like ways you can go about doing this is adding a blazer adding a jacket whether it be the pop color whether it be the pop print that will be the focal piece and you're adding that over you know something basic or you have a full solid look or you have something that's a full printed look but committing and simplifying the look i feel like that can add to the elevation of your look overall now my next tip for elevating your look is don't be afraid to layer think about what just adding a blazer a sweater a trench or regular coat to your outfit can really do to it and like i was saying before they make for great additions to very casual looks if you're wearing all sweats underneath and you add those items it's a little bit something more it's not your basic sweats or it's not your basic loungewear and i feel like part of this kind of leads into mixing textures and the contrast that gives you guys know i talked about texture in my texture proportion video if you don't you got another video to watch after this i'm 
and I'm just saying. So definitely check that out after this video if you haven't seen it already. But really think about it, like a regular everyday outfit, whether it's a cotton or jersey material, something super basic, super loungy. Think about that against like an aged leather, like a biker jacket or something fringe or something fur. Those two are gonna give you a contrast and whatever you add to that is just gonna give you a little bit more of that elevation and be that focal piece. And also with layering, kind of back to those accessories, don't be afraid to layer with your belt, whether it's wearing multiple belts at one or just wearing a thicker waistband. See what works for you, but with everything is gonna take you taking that step back, making sure you have balance, make sure you have proportion, making sure you're not doing too much and the look still looks effortless. Like I just threw this on. I wasn't trying hard. This is just how I, I came to be, you know? And last but not least is tip number 10, create a formula for ease. Once you have easy combos that you know work for you, work for your body type, it's very easy to switch those out and make different combinations. And what I mean by that is figure out what are those looks that you love throwing on or your easy go-tos and find ways that you can mix and match and vary those looks. So for instance, if you are a t-shirt and jeans kind of person or you're a blouse and trousers person or a skirt and tank person, if those are your go-tos, your easy things to throw on, when you get a little bit bored and you want to switch it up, you can start playing around with those same combos those same look you can start switching out the color of the top or switching out the bottom style you can bring in a different outerwear piece for a new focal point or again play with your accessories so all your accessories in your closet get some love and also in building your formula when it comes to makeup figure out what works best for you figure out what products you love the most so it's just like muscle memory it's a routine and you're not like starting from scratch you're not trying to figure it out as you go you know what works for you so you keep that going you can make slight variations when you get comfortable you just want to try something new when it comes to personal maintenance like your mammy's petties have a plan to maintain those things at home in case the lights get so busy or you just run out of time and you can't make it to the shop what can you do to maintain those things at home or just still feel kept without having to leave the house it's almost like making a contingency plan or a plan b if you can't make it to the shop What's gonna happen next? You know, like, are you gonna try press on? Are you gonna find ways to safely remove chips or nails that gotta go at home? Think about those things because at least having those things in place for me helped me think of alternatives when my go-to or whatever I usually do cannot work, I don't have the time, or life is life in. And I feel like all these things in general, especially with a formula, really help in reducing decision fatigue, especially when you're trying to put looks together. And I think it also helps you make the most of your closet. You know what you gravitate towards, so the day you get bored, switch it up, try something different, pick from your closet, shop your closet. And going through the whole process, I feel like it really helps you hone in on what's missing in your closet and also hone in on your personal style. So if you know you're someone who loves a button down, that's what you feel most comfortable in that's what you can wear the most ways and if that is part of your formula and let's say you only have one or two you might need a couple more and might be missing that you need a couple more of those and maybe your go-to colors your basic colors or maybe a pop color something that complements you so think through those things and also having a formula really helps you keep it pushing you know what you want you know what you're gravitating towards and you know what you need to get to get your look so then you can stay focused and, and then use all that energy and those brain waves to focus on something else so just to recap everything we talked about we talked about dressing for your shape we talked about making sure your clothes fit and are comfortable we talked about getting quality pieces and also maintaining those quality pieces we talked about looks that have versatility and transition that have the potential to be worn to multiple events we talked about accessorizing maintaining your appearance staying booked and not busy in terms of simplifying your looks by getting rid of too many distractions that make it busy but really honing in on focal piece or just keeping it chill overall we also talk about the role layering can play and we jumble all those things into finding a formula that works best for you so all in all those are all the tips that i have in terms of elevating your look elevating your style please let me know if you found this video helpful and let me know if you have any other tips that we can add in like go ahead and share those in the comments so we can you know learn from each other but with that said, that is all I have for you guys today. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and consider subscribing and liking this video. Keep telling a friend and tell a friend, tell a friend, like tell them all. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave some videos for you guys on the screen. But until next time, bye guys.